Professor Barnes again, episode three coming at you, Global Core and Periphery. I hope you can tell I'm trying to do these videos quick, plus I've been telling you I've been trying to do them quick, plus my battery's running out, so I gotta do it quick. All right, what are we looking at right now? We're looking at the Global Core and Periphery here in the IB syllabus. What we're really talking about is world systems theory. A guy by the name of Emmanuel Wallerstein came up with this theory. He said that the global economy in particular was broken up into the global core and global periphery in which there are comparative advantages for the global core versus the global periphery. If we search what the global core and periphery is, we find out that uh, every country on the planet gets broken down into a particular uh, core or periphery. And then there's also the semi-periphery, which is a zone of transition between the, the global core and periphery because the, one of the most important things that you need to un understand about this is that global core countries can become peripheral countries and global peripheral countries can become global core countries. And as a result, there's this you know, transition between the two, which is essentially the semi-periphery. You can figure these things out on your own. They're not too difficult to understand as far as these graphics. I'm not going to get too much into it. Um, a helpful map is one like this, though, that shows the uh, that shows the spatial representation of the global core and periphery. You'll notice that the correlation is that the rich countries tend to be the global core countries, and the poorer countries tend to be the peripheral countries. So what determines the global core and the global periphery? The four things that I like to look at are the infrastructure of the country, the economic sectors that make up the, uh, the, the economic development of the country, the physical geography of the country, and the political stability of the country. Global core countries tend to have a more advanced and better developed infrastructure in all aspects of their infrastructure. They tend to have uh, a more uh, service-based sector economy. They tend to have better advantages when it comes to physical geography, and they tend to be more politically stable. Whereas the global peripheral countries tend to have a less developed infrastructure, they tend to have a more primary sector-based economy, agriculture and resource extraction. They tend to um, have less of an advantage when it comes to physical geography. A lot of them are landlocked. And lastly, they, uh, they tend to be politically unstable. If Again, if we go back to that map, we notice that, yeah, that's pretty standard amongst the global core and periphery. And again, these maps, I mean, how do you determine what the global core and periphery is? Is China a core country was one thing that I just Googled because I was wondering. And it says here that they've moved from a periphery country to a semi-periphery country. And I bet that some people would argue that they are now a global core country because of the things that they're doing as far as their advanced economic development. This is just cool because it's a sweet GIF. It's a map that shows the internet and it shows the internet use around the world in a single day, red when internet use is high and blue when internet use is low. Black is where there's no internet use at all. And you'll notice that this map no matter what time of the day, even when people aren't really using the internet a whole lot, matches up pretty well with this map, as well as the KOF index map, which was the last video, if you want to match those ones up. Okay, so if we're talking about global core and periphery, global core countries tend to have better infrastructure. That includes internet technology, infrastructure, information communication technologies. One awesome uh, PowerPoint or slide share that I really that I have to throw a shout out to is from Stephen Heath and he created this global economy PowerPoint if you want to know more about the global core and periphery than what I'm just rambling on about right now you can go check out this PowerPoint it's really sweet it goes into the vicious cycle of poverty it goes into um, stages of development the Rostow model all sorts of crazy fun stuff that if you're a geography nerd like myself you'd love so I think that's everything for this video and I hope you guys are finding this useful. See you in the next one.